Howdy chaps, um, this is, I'm going to classify this as a bit of a bonus episode um, for my channel. It's, uh, you know, I'm just, I just whipped out the phone and I was like, oh, I'll just whip it out. I just whipped out the phone and I was like, oh, I better give these chaps a bit of an update on the Commodore because um, this is what I'm doing this weekend and hope, hoping it doesn't turn out too bad the second time. I mean, actually it turned out all right the first time, but the color was off, so I have to redo it. And I was not happy with my style line just here. So I tweaked it slightly. I mean, that's one of the hardest um, lines to get right on a car, just because it has to be so arrow sharp. Uh, mine is not going to be arrow sharp because I just can't do it. I've tried my hardest, and it's about as sharp as I can get it. Um, but yes, I'm at that point where I'm masking it back up, and boy, oh boy, it just takes forever. Prepping, masking... Painting's only about like you know, a tenth of the job, physically putting the paint on. So I've just been back masking and got my J-tape down in my window seal and I've taped it all up and I've pulled it down and taped it that way. And stupidly, you've got to actually, if you're going to paint the quarter panel, you've got to paint the whole turret as well. Not the whole, you have to paint the roof, but you've got to paint the clear's got to go all the way up and across the top because there's nowhere to really join it. Um, it's not... A, difficult but it's um just part and parcel and this sucked so much to rub down absolutely um i did make a mistake when i was when i prepped this the first time is i accidentally put my um adhesion primer down a little bit uh not as smooth as it could have and it ended up with a bit of a super high texture right there but i've rubbed it out so it should be right the second time so fingers crossed eh it's the joys of not actually being a professional painter. I'm just winging it. But I'm hoping that it should turn out not too rubbish. And I was just thinking about the two small channels that I was trying to think of the other day. One was Project Nade, and that's N-A-D-E. Um, she's pretty cool. I noticed a few people have already started to check her channel out. The other one I couldn't remember of, um, it's another guy that I know. He has, he's building a boat. Uh, or restoring a boat, restoring. Um, it's like a 40 foot yacht. So I don't know why, but I found it fascinating because it's such a monumental task. And that channel is called Sailing Quick Creations. Um, so I thought I'd give him a shout out. He's another Adelaide chap. Um, but it's just such a huge task. It's just like, well, I'm going to watch this guy because it's entertaining. Um, I don't watch just cars on YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, check those two people out and give them a subscribe. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a follow-up to the rest of this video once I have um, painted it. So I'm just back masking right now and all that wonderful jazz. You might think, hey, you haven't masked that much. But that's because I'm going to use this bag here. Like I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by the compressor turning on. Um, one of the fantastic things you can buy for, I think it's, I know it's less than 50 bucks. You can buy a 122 meter roll of um, plastic which folds out enough it's it's designed solely for bagging up cars for paint um, super cheap um, and you roll it out and then you fold it out and out and out and it covers the whole car and that's what grass shops use and they go through tons of that stuff but I don't go through that much because I don't paint that often but if you're doing masking at home or you want to cover something out grab one of those guys just realize it says corona treated I'm like I'm not sure what that means <laughs> I guess it's fine, um, but that is a fantastic way of masking up a car without using mountains of tape and mountains of um, paper and stuff, so yeah. But yeah, I'll catch up in a second once I've uh, thrown some paint on it and hopefully. And now most people say, why don't you blend the door and the boot lid? Uh, because I'm not going to. Uh, and I know for a fact in a crash shop they would absolutely blend the door, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to... Hope the colour's right and I'm going to send it um, because we just need the car done. I don't have unlimited funds to do this, so I just need to do the damage and carry on. Um, but in the scheme of things, that quarter panel has turned out, considering how crushed that guy was, that actually not too shabby. But um, yeah, we'll catch you up in a jiff jiff. And as you can see, the bag folds out to a fairly decent size. And I always thought to myself going, do you know, 
if you're ever somewhere and there's not an iota of a breeze, you know what you gotta do? You gotta try and mask up a car with a giant bag, and I guarantee you the wind will pick up. Happens every time. I was like, oh, this is great, I'll just bag it up. There's not an iota of a breeze. Whoosh! Wind comes in. I'm like, seriously? The hell is going on? <laughs> Anyway, but that's um, yeah, so basically you have to make sure you got paint this side. I think it's got something to do with static So like this side attracts um, The paint fumes I think don't quote me on this But it's quite easy just make sure paint this side is down the dead center and it should fold out enough To cover your whole car and this is where I normally just do a couple little pigtails at the bottom to stop to sort of turn it into a bit of a, a tight bag on the car um, And then we could do is a razor blade and more masking tape and you just cut peel and basically you just cut this section out and the rest of the car is instantly masked up. Quite incredible really. And this phone, because I haven't got my camera with me, doesn't have the sort of wide lens that can capture everything. So I've got to zoom, I've got to be up really far away. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, keep on keeping on. Well chaps, um, second time was better than the first time. I had the gun set at a different, different setting. Um, Temperature was different, uh, and it's come out not too shabby. I mean, there's some fallout in it. Like you wouldn't believe it. But the last time I painted, it, I got hardly any. This time I've got, you know, it's a fairly normal amount. Um, but I'm going to consider that uh, fairly passable, I think, especially for a shed job. I wouldn't wouldn't ever call myself a magician. Ever, 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 ever. But I think I can get something that is, at a quick glance, 30 mile an hour, you wouldn't even know as it passes you. So, you can see where the base coat stops, because it's only clear at the front. So I, the color stopped here last time, so I had to paint the color just a bit further this time to get rid of it all. Um, there are no runs. A um, bit of trash, but you know, you get that on big jobs. I think that is quite passable. I mean, for regions, I don't even think they'll care. I may not even buff it, may leave it a week and just reassemble the car uh, and then give it a light uh, tickle later on. But as far as I'm aware, like last time I painted, I had a big sag that ran through here. No sag this time. So I call that a win. Amateurs can do it. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, bonus video, as I call it. The Commodore, or at least the back half of it, is now painted for the second time. Let's hope that when I unmask it tomorrow, that it's the right colour. <laughs> but anyway, stay tuned for more episodes.